Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. This is going to be Algebra 1's Chapter 1 Test Review, so go ahead and have your Test Review packet out so we can go ahead and get started going over these. The first one to solve the equation, we're going to subtract 2 thirds from both sides, but remember as you're subtracting fractions, they need to have common denominators, so I'm just going to change that to 4 6, so we'll have 5 6 minus 4 6, and that gives us 1 6 for number 1. For number 2, we're also going to be subtracting. Notice how we have a smaller number minus larger one number, so our answer is automatically going to be negative. What I can do over here, though, is come over here and show my work. You will be able to use a calculator on this test, so no worries, um, but you should get 6.8 once you find the difference. And since we're doing a smaller minus a larger, your answer should be negative 6.8 as number two. For number three, it'd be best to move your y's to one side and your x and your constants to another. So I'm going to move my constants to the left side, and again, remember it doesn't matter, and my y's to the right side. Okay. Something you should notice is that when I move my y's to either side, I'm going to get zero because they're going to cancel out. So this is no solution for number three. For number four, I can add six to both sides. So I have 4h is equal to 18. And then I'm just going to divide both sides by four. I do get a decimal here. h will be equal to four and a half or 4.5. For number five, again, you want to move your constants to one side and variables to another. This time I'm going to move um, my k's to the left side. Oops. Okay, um, once I move my case to the left side, I'm going to notice I also, actually I'm going to start over with that because there's something else I want to point out to you. I could have combined these terms first, the 8 and minus 3, so I have 5 minus k is equal to, is equal to 8 minus 3, which is 5 minus k. Oops. So, when we've talked about these before, if it is equal to one another, and even if I add k's to both sides, it's going to say 5 equals 5. And that is a true statement, so we're going to say infinitely many solutions. For number 6, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I have m divided by 3 is equal to negative 11. And then to solve, I'm going to times both sides by 3. So that m is equal to negative 33. For number 7, it would be best to distribute first, so I'm going to say 6 times 3, which is 18, and 6 times negative d, which is negative 60, plus 2d is equal to 24. Let's go ahead and combine these like terms, so I'm going to get 18 minus 4d is equal to 24, and then I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides, because 18 is a regular positive 18, so I have to do the opposite. So I'm going to have negative 4d is equal to 6. And then when I divide both sides by negative, where I am going to get a fraction here, or a decimal, I can say d is equal to negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5. Okay? Over here with number 8, I'm going to combine my like terms first. Again, I'm going to change this to 2 fourths w. So 1 fourth plus 2 fourths can give me 3 fourths w plus 5 equals 11. I'm going to start getting w by itself, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'll have 3 fourths w is equal to 6. And then to get w all by itself, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 4 thirds. So I'll have w is equal to 24 thirds, which simplifies to 8. So w is equal to 8 for number 8. For number 9, you were um, getting your constants to both sides, so we added uh, 3 to get to 9 and subtracted 6 in over here to the 2 in. We're going to get negative 4 in is equal to 12. When we divide both sides by negative 4, we're going to get negative 3. Over here for number 10, when we distribute 1 half to 6, we get 3x, and 1 half to 2, we get 1. 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 3 is 15. We're going to subtract 5x to get to the left side and subtract 1 to make it to the right side. We end up getting negative 2x is equal to 14, and dividing both sides by negative 2, we get negative 7 for number 10. 
For number 11, we're distributing the 2 thirds. So I'm going to have 2 thirds W and then 2 thirds of 12. That's saying 2 times 12 is 24. And then dividing by 3 is 8. So 2 thirds W plus 8 is equal to 3W minus 6. I'm going to make all of my um, constants go to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 8. And then I'm also going to subtract 3W. So these will cancel out, so I'll have negative 14 here. 2 thirds and negative 3w, I need to have it have the same fraction. So that will change to negative 9 thirds and 2 thirds. And that's going to give me negative 7 thirds. Yep. So negative 7 thirds w is equal to negative 14. And then to get w by itself, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Um, one thing I can do here is cross cancel. So W is equal to 6 for number 11. Number 12, remember we have two different types of equations to write for number 12. M plus 8 is equal to 12, or M plus 8 equals negative 12. When we're solving the left side, we're just going to subtract 8 from both sides. That m is equal to 4. When we subtract 8 from both sides here, though, m will be equal to negative 20. Okay. The next one, very similar. 5y plus 2 is equal to 7y, or 5y plus 2 is equal to negative 7y. I'm going to bring 5y to the right side. So I'm going to have 2 is equal to 2y. So that y is equal to 1. Over here, when I bring 5y to the right side, I'll have negative 12y is equal to 2. And that one, when I divide both sides by negative 12, y is going to be equal to negative 1 6. Okay? And remember, if you are trying absolute value, um, some solutions might be extraneous, and this one will be an extraneous solution. The reason is, is if we plug in a negative 1, 6, it'll say this, 5y plus 2, or excuse me, 5 times negative 1, 6 plus 2, and absolute value is equal to 7 times negative 1, 6, and that's going to give us a negative 7, 6, and absolute values can't be negative, okay? So you only have one solution for number 13. Number 14, this one is kind of like your double duty, where you have 4k plus 5, and then nothing changes in the first round, so 3k minus 2, or 4k plus 5 is equal to negative 3k plus 2, where everything changes it to its opposite. So with the first round, I'm going to make all my constants go to the right and my variables to the left. That way, 4k minus 3k is just k, and negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Over here, though, when I move all of my constants over, I'm going to get 7k is equal to negative 3, and then divide both sides by 7. I am going to get a var uh, not a variable, a fraction. It'll be negative 3 sevenths. Okay. So this one we're solving for f. So remember, in order to solve for f, we're going to start by multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this real quick. So there's my rewritten fraction or my rewritten problem. And remember, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so 9 fifths. So these can cancel out, so I'll have 9 fifths c is equal to f minus 32. And then add 32 to both sides. So f is equal to, make sure that's capitalized, um, 9 fifths c plus 32. Okay. Next one, write an equation to find the value of a variable. So in number 16, the sum of the angles are 360. So you would be writing 5b plus 5b plus 4b plus 4b. And this is, again, on page 3 you're following along there. Um, I can add all these together. That 
that's 10b plus 8b, that's 18b is equal to 360. And then we're going to find the value, so we're just going to divide both sides by 18. And 360 divided by 18 is 20, so b is equal to 20. Okay, with number 17, you have a little bit more to consider. I have two parentheses x minus 1 plus 5x plus 2 plus 2x equals 180. I do need to distribute these, so 2x minus 2 plus 5x plus 2 plus 2x equals 180. And then now I can start to combine like terms. 2x plus 5x is 7x. 7x plus 2x is 9x. Negative 2 and then plus 2 are going to cancel out. So I'm just going to have 9x is equal to 180. And then to solve for the value, divide both sides by 9 so that x is equal to 20 as well for number 17. Number 18, we're solving the literal equation for y. So that means we want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides to get 2y is equal to 12 minus 3x and then divide everything by 2. So y is equal to 6 minus 3 halves x or you could say y is equal to 6 minus 1.5x. Okay, for number 9, or sorry, 19, you notice that you can factor out the two y's. So if we do that, we'll get 3x plus 9 is equal to m, and then we're going to divide both sides by 3x plus 9, so that y is equal to m over 3x plus 9. And then over here, um, it'd be best to combine y, so I'm going to actually move the y's to the right side so that it won't end up negative, and I'm also going to add this 14 over here to get it over away from the y's. So this 3y plus 4y is 7y. So I have over here 7x plus 14 equals 7y. And then if we divide all, all things by 7, I will have x plus 2 equals y. Okay? For 21, we're solving for h. So first thing, I'm going to rewrite my equation down here so I have a little bit more room. I r squared h. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to get rid of this fraction here. So I'll multiply by 3 over 1 on both sides. So I'll have 3v is equal to pi r squared h. And one thing you can do in one big swoop is just divide h, pi r squared h, by pi r squared so that they cancel out. So we have h is equal to 3v over pi r squared. Next up, we have number 22. This is your last page of your review sheet. Um, thinking about your rectangle, I drew a picture to help me on this one. The garden has a perimeter equal to 50, and it says the length is 5 less than twice the width. So that's 2 times minus 5, so 2x minus 5. And um, so that would just mean the width is just regular x because if the length is twice minus 5, then, then the width, then the x the width will just have to be x. Um, so what we're going to do is write a perimeter question. Um, so we have two 2x's minus 5's, essentially, and then 2x's on the left side, so left and right side. So I know I'll have 2x, and then if I combine two, these 2x's, I have 4x, and then minus 5's is minus 10. So I have 4x minus 10 plus 2x. I can add these together to get 6x minus 10 is equal to 50 perimeter. Add 10 to both sides. 6x is equal to 60. x is equal to 10. Okay. For 23, a necklace chain costs $15. Beads cost $2.75 each. You spend a total, I'm going to write my total down, so $28.75 on a necklace before tax. So I know I'm going to automatically have to call cost 
fifteen dollars for the chain and it wants to know how many beads did you buy i know that the beads cost two dollars and 75 cents but i don't know the number of beads so i'm going to attach an x to that and i can go ahead and start solving i'm going to excuse me subtract 15. <clears throat> so subtracting 15 i'm going to get 13 75 is equal to 2.75 x and then divide both sides by 275 x is equal to 5. So you got 5 beads. Okay. For 24, um, the maximum time allowed is 3 minutes and the minimum time allowed is 2 minutes. This is kind of what we did in our warm-up um, this morning. If you're thinking about minimum time is 2, maximum time is 3. Okay. So the middle of that is 2.5 you're trying to figure out an equation that helps you write that and you notice the distance between your minimum and maximum to the middle is 0.5 a piece. So if we have, if we start with x and subtract 0.5 to find the absolute value, that's going to give us, oh sorry, if we subtract 2.5, because that's our middle number, that should give us the 0.5 of the distance. So that no matter what, when we plug in 3 we get 0.5, and when we plug in 2, considering absolute value, we also get 0.5, okay? So make sure you're considering the distance between them and the middle point. And then the last one, you're trying to figure out um, they're going to be the same price no matter what, okay? Um, so what you can do is set up an equivalent equation for both sides. So logo setup fee is 50 bucks flat for company A and price for t-shirt is 50, 15x. Company B is $95 for a logo and price for t-shirt is 12x. So we're just figuring out how many t-shirts is the team buying based on total cost being the same. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12x from both sides and subtract 50 from both sides. Oops, so we get 3x is equal to 45, divide both sides by 3. Each team is going to be getting 15 shirts. Okay, that's going to conclude your reviews. Sorry it took so long. Thanks so much for hanging in there taking, and taking your time going through this video. And good luck on your Chapter 1 test.